Please keep in mind that working with feelings can be a very messy process that can go well for a bit and then not so well in patches. What I wanted to offer tonight is just hope and some broad hopeful brush strokes to work on with your kids, some real stuff. And to finish up with, I've got a few ideas to help you become the best emotional coach for your kids. But these tips are actually for you. However, they might also help you structure your child's life in the same way. After all, what's good for you is probably going to be good for your kids. Number one, try to lower your stress and the intensity of your life. And genuinely, if you can't, then deliberately find ways to break the intensity and wind down. Seriously, start jogging, walking, doing some exercise. Start a card or a board game night at home with the kids where TV and screens just don't go on. Join in community events more often deliberately and be more active together. Number two, treasure your friendships. Friends are genuinely a treasure for human beings, for us and for our kids. Along with family, having a few good friends to talk things over with enriches and protects each of us. Number three, eat well. Everything we eat changes our moods, our behaviour and our health. And I'm not suggesting you become obsessional. But we do know that in countries where populations eat higher levels of fish, they have much lower levels of depression. Fish contains fatty acids called EPA, which is lacking in those more inclined towards sadness and depression. Oh, yeah, I know, you don't like fish. Well, if you don't like fish and your kids don't like fish, these gorgeous fatty acids are also found in flaxseed, walnuts, chia seeds, and are very good fats. Get enough sleep is number four. Getting enough sleep is one of the most powerful ways we can protect ourselves physically and mentally. Over 60% of people who sleep five hours or less a night end up obese and or depressed. Your kids and your teens need nine hours of sleep every night. Sleep is the best tool ever for organisation. It's the best tool ever for a tolerant mind. For continued learning, for remaining at school, for working and for happiness. Number five, understand flow. Flow is when we do things that for a while totally captivates our interest. At the end of flow activities, we'll often think to ourselves, jeez, where'd that time go? There are many sources of flow. Sports, drawing, dancing, reading, swimming, arts, crafts, surfing. Losing yourself in flow, especially with your family, is highly protective towards mental health. Number six, do good things for others. Get your kids to do good things for others too. Pick someone you know and try to knock their socks off by doing a brilliant, great deed for them. Give them a compliment. Greet them kindly. Enjoy your time with them. Just do something kind. You'll be amazed at how much benefit you'll get by increasing somebody else's happiness. And let your children see you do this. Number seven, be grateful and lucky. While we can focus on the things that aren't so good and the things that are hard and the things that upset us, most of us actually do have a lot to be grateful for. And focusing on this and deciding that we're lucky makes an enormous difference to our well-being. Number eight, 
get some exercise. Exercise decreases the stress hormones and that's a fact. It increases the happy chemicals. During exercise, the endorphins leave you with a sense of well-being. Just 20 minutes of walking every day will do this for you and your child. Number nine, laugh more. Laughter raises our levels of serotonin and dopamine. Make a point of watching TV or movies with your kids. Make sure you have a movie night. Share funny stories, share jokes, and joke with them too. And number 10, I want to thank you for coming along tonight in such big numbers without your big feelings. <laughs> thank you very much.